June of 1952 was the beginning of my close personal friendship with your father. Connie Schöner of the Ore Department of the Metallgesellschaft met me at the Hauptbahnhof and took me to my room I'd rented on the Klaus Rothstrasse in northern Frankfurt, where I stayed for about six months. Over the next two days, he got me through the endless red tape of the Polizeipräzidium in order to get my Aufenthaltserlaubnis. He was the one that introduced me to your father in the Metallgesellschaft cafeteria during Mahlzeit. Soon after I'd settled in, I was invited by Peter to his mother and his apartment in Frankfurt for dinner. She, of course, is your grandmother, Ilse. No Alfeschen at that time. The Bad Homburg house wasn't quite finished yet, but I had nonetheless a delightful evening. I only have interior photos of the house looking down now on the formal open area used as a dining room. Normally, it looked like this, formal and elegant reception dining room combined. Your father's library, a den, was a den of thieves. No, 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 not a pleasure den. Micheline Beckerflugel, ne de Leaval. Peter and my Norwegian girlfriend, Berit Nielsen. Fun time. Sometimes Dieter Lengfeldt was added to the mix. All MGites, of course. Micheline was and still is a sweetheart. She was Mr. Kale, head of the lithium ore department and Connie's secretary. Naturally, being Swiss, she spoke four languages. The three of us shared the same office. Connie Schoener was a nice guy, and if my memory serves me right, he had some traumatic experiences during World War II, which left him with severe migraine headaches from time to time. From time to time, Micheline, Peter, Berit, and myself, we just let it all hang out. This is not how I remember the Hauptfacher. In the triangle was a temporary structure with a restaurant on the second floor. Many a time I had good goulash stew with a dollop of sour cream on top. This is the oldest photograph of the Eschenheimer tour that I could find. The new buildings weren't there when I was there. In its place, almost attached to the tour itself, was my afternoon and evening watering hole. The Binzen Bar. Ah, the famous Binzen Bar band. They knew all my songs and played them every time I walked in. Blue Tango, Aegon, and Tango Max. Du hast so einen Rhythmus, dass ein jeder Mist muss Max. Du bist ja ganz famos. In Tango bist du groß. And if you have to, look them up on Google. They were classics of the time. Peter, the mixer, he made the greatest Ohios. And he loved them, too. Sometimes those at the Metallgesellschaft, hey, we had to let off a little steam once in a while. The Graf was studious and didn't party too much, because unbeknownst to me, early on in our relationship, he didn't tell me, but he had the responsibility of not only supporting himself and her grandmother, but recovering the assets of the principals and clients of your grandfather's legal firm, and also assets of the family holdings and turn them into cash, if need be, for additional investment income. Your father was a voracious reader, and he kept current on all the news, local and international, especially politics. Our first Ausführung was to the Nürburgring in 1952, August. It was hot as hell. Ten or eleven minutes per lap, 196 bends and curves per lap, including the carousel. It was fantastic. You can see Peter's dressed to kill. He drove me in your grandmother's two-tone green cabriolet VW to the carousel. I have no idea who the other people are. We spent an overnight on the ground. We're a pretty ragged-looking bunch of people. Connie was the outdoorsman. He had a fire going in a minute like a good old boy scout. He made us all sorts of stuff, including tea and God only knows what. It was great. Here he comes. Here he comes. Ascari coming up the hill. He's getting closer and closer to the carousel, that hairpin turn. And eventually, he's declared the winner. After the race, Peter and I, with the top down, toured the whole track, going as fast as we could, um, 120 kilometers an hour. 
It was a fantastic weekend. I got my first special invitation. This was after Ilse and Peter had moved into their new house. We drove one Saturday or Sunday morning, I'm not sure which, to marburg sur -Lan. What a spectacular city with a castle atop the hill. Marburg is a quaint medieval town. In 1952, there weren't very many people around because very few people could afford to travel. The autobahns were empty except for trucks and some military convoys. Yeah, that's my best photo of the castle at the time. Yes, it was the servants that lived in the very top. It was hot and humid in the summer and freezing and damp in the winter. The entrance to Marburg Castle of the Landgraves of Hesse. The inner courtyard. Here, Peter began his historical education of this ignorant Englishman. This is the more modern part of the castle. Thinking about it now, it wasn't open, so we must have been there on a Sunday. What can I say? Your grandmother, I can't remember her in anything but mourning. She was always fairly serious and formal, except, of course, with her dear Peter. Ah, Peter, the man about town, always with a good story or joke. I can still hear his voice even now. We're getting to the Pièce de Résistance. We're looking down from the castle to the St. Elizabeth of Hungary's church, built by the Teutonic Knights, started in the year she was canonized, 1235. Oh, the shame of the Reformation. The Landgraves were Lutheran evangelical, so the church was stripped almost bare, no more stained glass windows, though through their generosity they set aside space for the saying of Mass. St. Elizabeth's Church and her relics were a place of pilgrimage and devotion over the centuries, though the Protestants removed the relics. The golden shrine with Christ on one side with the six apostles and on the other the other six remained. The relics can now be found in St. Elizabeth's convent in Vienna and the City Museum of Stockholm as well as Kosici in Slovakia. Many miracles have been attributed to her. Her relics were scattered by her descendant, Landgraf Philip I, the Magnanimous. He distributed them to Vienna, Kosici, while her head was taken by the Swedish army during the Thirty Years' War back to Stockholm. There is much more history to her that Peter told me. But what a wonderful introduction to history! A la Peter. After that great trip to Marburg, it was back to the grindstone at Metallgesellschaft. Yeah, right. My two other buddies, Connie Schoener and Dieter Lenkfeld, part of our luncheon Mahlzeitgruppen. St. Nicholas Day was upon us. It was a fun time. Metallgesellschaft had its own travel agent. On the left, the sogenannten Reisemüller. The others... A complete mystery. Herr Calais, am apparat, aus Berlin, my immediate boss, dancing with one of the secretaries from the secretarial pool. My God, that doesn't exist anymore. On this special occasion, St. Nick, played by who knows who, and his angel, Micheline de Lieval, and me, about to get a present. Unfortunately, Peter was not at the St. Nicholas party, as he was not in the ore department, but in another one with a rather severe boss, if I remember. But here at the end of this part of the story, we're at St. Leonard's. One of the most poignant moments when I felt closest to Peter was when he took me to his parish church, where I think he and his father and mother went to Mass. All of a sudden, he was overcome by emotion. 